Is it acne or is it fungal acne? Today, I'm going to clarify the difference. I'll explain what fungal acne is, how it differs from regular common acne, how to best treat it, and steps you can take to avoid it. I'm Dr. Hannah Kopelman, here to help you achieve healthy and flawless skin. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Fungal acne is the ultimate acne mimicker. It actually comes from a yeast that has two different names, but it's the exact same thing, either called Melisezia folliculitis or Pterosporum folliculitis. So you might hear these two terms tossed around quite often. Fungal acne is actually a misnomer because it really isn't acne at all. It's a skin condition that is from the overgrowth of the yeast Melisezia or Pterosporum, as I mentioned. And what happens is we normally have this yeast that lives on our skin flora, but some of us develop an overabundance of that yeast. And that causes an irritation and an inflammation of the hair follicle, which then produces something that looks like acne. The yeast I mentioned probably sounds familiar to you because it does cause other skin conditions. Most commonly, it causes seborrheic dermatitis, which is dandruff. Don't forget to check out my dandruff video. And it also causes a rash called tinea versicolor, which can be seen on the chest and the back, and it causes a scaly dispigmentation. And I can get further into that in another video, but I do want to put it out there that this yeast might sound really familiar to you because it is common in other skin conditions. So what exactly does fungal acne look like? We know it looks very similar to acne. It's small red bumps that usually are either pus filled, so they'll look like pustules, and they're typically mildly itchy. The distribution is what differs from regular acne. Usually we find fungal acne on the upper back, the chest, the shoulders, sometimes even around the hairline, the forehead, and the chin. So of course there is overlap with regular acne because you can find acne in those similar areas. But the most common place to find the acne before the fungal acne before you find it on your face is typically on the chest, back, and shoulders. Fungal acne typically appears as small red bumps that can be pus filled and they're always uniform, which means they have the same size and shape. As we know, or as you know, common acne or regular acne has a lot of variability to it. You know, you could have big pimples, small pimples, whiteheads, blackheads, or even cysts. So fungal acne is a key thing when you look at it, it should always look the same throughout. One more thing to distinguish fungal acne from regular acne is that fungal acne is typically itchier than common acne. Now let's get into the causes of fungal acne. We do know that there's a strong correlation between someone like you who might have oily skin and the development of fungal acne. And this is because oil gets trapped in our pores and then the yeast builds up in the pores and that leads to an inflammation and an inflammatory response that produces fungal acne. Now another very common cause of fungal acne is actually from the use of oral antibiotics to treat common acne. When you're killing bacteria with the antibiotics, you actually can lead to an overgrowth of yeast. If you're someone who spends a lot of time in a hot human environment where you're sweating a lot and you're wearing tight, non-breathable clothing, this also can lead to the formation of fungal acne, especially if you're wearing a hat and you're working out or you're playing tennis and along that hairline, you can very commonly develop fungal acne. If you're at home watching this and you've been treating your acne for quite a while with over-the-counter products and it's just not getting better, it might be because you have fungal acne, in which case you would require a different type of treatment, which we will get into today. With that said, you can have both fungal acne and common acne at the same time. So that's why it's important to first get the proper diagnosis before you begin treating your fungal acne. And it might require seeing a dermatologist to decipher which one is which. So I know fungal acne has the word acne in it, which can really be misleading and lead you to believe that you treat your acne, your fungal acne, with acne treatments and over-the-counter products. However, you actually treat it entirely different. The goal of treating your fungal acne is to decrease that overgrowth of yeast. So what you actually do is use 
anti-dandruff shampoos, which I have mentioned a lot of them in my dandruff video, and I'll mention them again here. Now I know you're like, why would I treat my shoulders, my back, my chest, and my face with a shampoo? So you can actually look at these treatments as like a, a face wash or a body cleanser more than a shampoo if you're using it in those areas, and it's completely safe. So I'm holding three products that can be used as face washes or cleansers on your body, whether you're in the shower or just washing your face. First is the Nizerol shampoo, and this contains the 1% ketoconazole. Very useful for effectively doing anti-inflammatory treatment on your skin, but also can help stop that overgrowth of the yeast. The next thing I suggest contains selenium sulfide 1%. This is also anti-inflammatory and can help stop that overgrowth of yeast. The third product that I recommend is Head & Shoulders, which has zinc pyrothione in it. However, zinc pyrothione in Head & Shoulders is a little bit less sensitive because of the scent in Head & Shoulders, so it can cause more irritation to your skin. So you might have to just try out all three of these, see which one works best for you. Now, to, the way to use these properly is actually by applying them to either your face, if you have fungal acne, like I said, on your forehead, along your hairline, or your, in your chin area, or also putting them in the shower on your back, chest, shoulders, and let them really sit there for a minimum five minutes, max 20 minutes, and then rinse them off. You probably don't want to put them on your face for more than 10 minutes because you don't want to cause excessive irritation to your face. But if you leave them on for longer than five minutes, this will help to get into the pores to stop that overgrowth of yeast and act as an anti-inflammatory. I also recommend using salicylic acid if you don't want to use these shampoo products on your face or your body because salicylic acid can also get into the pore area, decrease the um, inflammation in the pores, as well as stop the growth of the fungus, and it's also antibacterial. So if you have common acne and fungal acne, you can be killing two birds in one stone. Another product that I recommend, and it's probably my favorite one, because if you have sensitive skin, this is definitely the best option for you. It's called Vanny Cream Free and Clear, and it has zinc pyrothyrone 2% in it. It has no dyes, no fragrances, it's super gentle and great for sensitive skin. So this can either be found in a, a body wash form or it's in a bar soap, it's called the Z-Bar. So try those out if you have sensitive skin and I think you'll be really happy with them. If you're someone who is not improving on the over-the-counter products that I recommended today, I suggest you see your dermatologist because they will likely prescribe you with an oral fluconazole pill, which treats the yeast, the overgrowth of that yeast from the inside. They also might prescribe you with ketoconazole 2%, which is stronger than what you can buy in the store. Now, if you're prescribed with that oral fluconazole pill and you're treating that overgrowth of yeast from the inside, you're going to continue that course, and then once you stop, you're going to want to continue with a maintenance therapy. And your maintenance therapy should be with the topical treatments, either the ones that you can buy in the store or the ketoconazole 2%. You don't want to just immediately stop everything you're doing because your fungal acne will just come right back. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this yeast loves hot, humid environments, and if you're someone that lives in your exercise clothes or sweats a lot, then it's likely that in the summertime when you're sweating even more, this will flare. So I recommend that in the summer when it's getting hot outside, use your maintenance therapy like one to two times a week, even if you're not seeing the fungal acne because you'll catch it before it starts. In addition to the treatments I recommended to you today, you can also look for products that contain niacinamide, tea tree oil, or sulfur. All of these have properties that are anti-inflammatory, can help reduce that oil, sebum production, and as well as stop the overgrowth of the yeast. In addition to the treatment options I mentioned today, I have a few quick, easy tips to how to avoid recurrence. Shower immediately after you worked out or did a sweaty activity. Try to avoid wearing tight, non-breathable clothing all day long. Try to choose moisturizers that are lightweight and oil-free. And try to use your antifungal products regularly. Also, be gentle with your skin, as always. Avoid using harsh chemical exfoliants because this can actually make your fungal acne worse. As with many things in skincare, be patient with the skincare. It can take several weeks to see an improvement. 
but it will work and you will see a difference. So avoid picking your skin because it will cause more inflammation and more irritation. I hope this video clarified for you the difference between fungal acne and acne. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.